In this lesson, we're going to cover how to rig up the head and uh, add controls to move the head around. And uh, as far as the control for just moving the head uh, and rotating it, looking back and forth, all that stuff, uh, that control is pretty simple, so I'm going to throw in everything in here. So how do we control the eyes, how do we do the facial controls, and all that. Um, and before I start here, I'm going to jump in with one little caveat. So if you've been following along with my videos um, and you've just been kind of mirroring what I did uh, for the facial controls, um, you may not have the proper orientation for the LRAs in here. And uh, I did it too quick in the beginning, and then I got to this, and I realized, oh, you know what, this isn't quite the rotations I need. So essentially everything here is X facing back, Z up, Y off to the side. And there's a couple exceptions there, and I'll, I'll show those in a second. But let me explain why it's this position. Because So for example, here's here's the joint for the left side brow. So again, it's, it's on the right side, but we need it because we need that wide pivot point so we can rotate the eyebrow across the skull and that starts to get us a diameter or circumference that kind of matches the skull from that pivot point. Uh, so that's the left side. And if you remember what I told you before, I've been saying X always faces you know, towards the child. Well, here it's facing back and let me show you why I have that. Um, what I want for all of these is so I can grab all of these at once if I want to and start to rotate them and they all act the same. Um, Second, I, I want logical rotation. So we're going to look at the channel box here as I'm rotating this. Let me move it over so you keep your eyes closer on each. So as I go up, let me turn off my discrete rotate real quick. As I go up, it's a positive number, and as I go down, it's a negative number. So again, you know, that's that's working with the whole grid logic that we have in math of you know you have a crosshair and this corner is positive positive, positive negative, uh, negative positive, negative negative. Um, this is kind of same idea with my rotation. So if I rotate this way, that's positive. If I rotate that way, it's negative. Same deal. If I rotate that way, positive. That way, it's negative. Um, and that to me is, is logical rotation for something that's uh, going off here or, or any of these joints. And they all have the same thing. So positive, negative, so on. Uh, the way they were oriented before, uh, either I wasn't getting consistent motion between all of them or, uh, you know, this way would be negative and that would be be positive, which seemed backwards to me logically. And again, that's that's all about the the reason we're we're putting in these orienting these LRAs is to get logical rotation. Now, the only ones that are different are the lower jaw stuff here. So that's the upper lip. Let's see if I can get the lower lip here. There we go. So it's reverse. So if I go down, that's positive. Uh, up, that's negative. And the reason for that is so if I grab upper lip and lower lip and I rotate them both positive, I get an open mouth rather than both lips going up or both lips going down, I get opening happening. Um, so if we look at the LRA for that joint, uh, it's just flipped around 180 degrees in Z. So you know, if I grab them both, move them uh, left or right, they both move the same direction, not opposite directions. If I twist them, they both move the same direction. But if I grab them in Z, uh, they are going opposite directions. So uh, something to be aware of. You know, that's again kind of a bigger lesson than the LRAs. I probably should have covered it in there, but. Um, Hopefully, as you go, this, this stuff makes more sense into the logic of it. So again, um, orient everything so positive, oops, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's just finding the right orientation uh, until I do that. And, and whatever the default uh, orientation, you know, where, where it aimed first, I, I'm keeping that overall position. I'm just rotating 90 degrees at a time until I get something that gives me that. So anyway, if you followed along, or even if you did your own, something to check before going through and doing the head stuff here. Uh, so I've done it for everything attached to the head. So the all the facial controls, the eye controls, the tongue. Um, but as, as far as the overall head and everything, I'm still happy with everything else in the body. It was just those. OK, so with that out of the way, let's get on to actually make the head control. And actually, uh, now let's take a second. All these facial joints I've been just talking about, I'm going to hide them. And the reason I'm going to hide them is because we're going to add IK handles uh, up and down the head here. And I know there's some jaw joints and things like that right here in the center. And I don't want to accidentally click on them and get some weird bending happening throughout my head. I just I want a single chain each time, which I'll explain in a second. But So I'm going to grab everything in here. I'm leaving head joint shown because I'll need that to add, or head and joint shown because I'll need that to... Um, add my last IK handle, but the rest of the stuff I could just go ahead and hide. 
And it'll still show the endpoints. That's fine. Or the, the arrows. But all I'm worried about is the circle showing. So I'm going to make another IK handle. Uh, and I'm going to go into options, make sure I'm still on RP solver. And I am. And if not, change it to RP solver. And I'm just going to click out one IK handle per chain. Uh, and I'm not doing it across multiples because that wouldn't get, get us the bending I want. IK handles tend to only bend one way, like an elbow. Um, so like if we did it across here, we'd only be able to bend this direction, not forward, not side to side, um, which isn't what we want. So we're going to add one per a length. And let's go ahead. I'm going to move this real quick just to test it out, and then I'm going to undo that movement. So, okay, so that's what it starts to get us. Now, if you notice as I'm positioning this, that's probably a pretty drastic move for the bottom of the neck. You know, when you rotate your head, it's, it's probably more from the center of your neck than down here. Um, so we'll address this in a second, because moving 100% with the head control is not going to be the right answer. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Um, but just so you're aware that that's going to be an issue. Um, and then as far as the twisting, uh, We'll use these RP solvers to handle the twist. We'll, we'll make uh, little things for the aim at, like we did for the elbows and the knees, but they won't be visible. They'll just be there as part of the control. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, I'm going to make a head control, and I am just going to steal this chest control that I made before. Um, so I'm going to pick walk up. I'm going to select the chest control, pick walk up, so I have the CT group. And I'm going to duplicate it. It looks like I have scale in there, but that's not a big deal. It's on the CT group, so I can always undo that. Um, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Shift-P to unparent it so it's not parented under. Uh, oh, wait. Let me make sure. Okay. No, none of this stuff is scaled. That's fine. Did I scale this? Ah, that's where my scale is coming from. Okay. So if you notice, once I unparent this, uh, that's why I was looking around. Like Once I unparent this, uh, the scale's fine. So... Uh, the scale is coming from the cog control. So, um, again, not worried about that because it's on the CT group. Not a big deal. Um, might be a big deal if we were scaling things, but we aren't just yet. And again, it's on the CT group, not the cog control. And usually you don't handle the scaling through the controls. So, anyhow, that, that's another lesson. Um, I'm going to pick a walk up, grab the CT group again. I'm going to point snap it to the base of the head. So not the neck, but the base of the head. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename it so I don't forget which control I'm working on since I already have a chest control and um, if I'm working with anything name specific that could be confusing later. Alright, so I have the pivot point there and now I'm just going to go into component mode. Uh, I'm going to turn off my manipulator uh, show uh, miscellaneous in here so I don't accidentally grab the LRS because those will take precedent over selecting the CVs. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my polygons and as long as my pivot point stays there, I don't care where the actual box is. It's just something friendly for selecting. So I'm going to try to keep it centered at least, you know, front to, you know, side to side. But front to back, up and down, I don't really care. Um, and I'll just make something that fits nice over the head. Also, I'm going to turn on all my other model layers here that I have. So um, you can see that the top of the head gets a little bit higher once we do that, add the hair on. So I'm adding a box that fits nicely around that. And again, no, no real rhyme or reason in this. Just something that I think represents the head well, is distinguishable from the other boxy shapes that we have around here, uh, is easy to select from any angle. Um, you know, that's the stuff I'm trying to get out of this as I make this, but it's, it's purely visual. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. That's good enough. Okay, so now we have a control. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all these other mesh layers so they aren't so distracting. And uh, let's see, everything's zeroed out in there? Good, okay, so move this around. Obviously, it doesn't do anything yet. I'm going to turn back off my mesh here. And actually, you know, I'm going to go ahead and unhide. Uh, all my hidden joints, I'm hitting Control shift h there to unhide the last hidden thing. Um, and that way I just, in case I hide something else, I don't forget about those, and uh, then I'd have to go back and manually turn those on one by one. Um, so, let's see. First, let's let's start to build RP 
solvers for the neck here. So we have uh, something to start to drive that. Um, let's see. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to make two of these invisible, and I'm going to make one visible. Um, and I'll explain this in a second here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, let me jump into my outline here so you can start to see this. Um, oh, you know, actually, first I'm going to name my IK handle so I remember which is which. Uh, CL, neck, base, IK, um, let's call this CL, neck, mid, IK and uh, CL head IK. And CL again just stands for center line. Um, so I know it's up and down the middle. Okay, so I know what those are. Um, and actually let's look at them real quick here. So uh, we're looking for that little white arrow. We can see this one's facing off to the left or the right of the character. Stage left, character right. Um, again off to the left and off to this my left. Um, so that's nice and consistent, so that'll be easy to remember. Sometimes they're facing backwards, forwards, left, right, you know, all different directions. So pay attention to yours, but in our case, they all seem to be facing one way, which is great. Um, so what we're going to do to give at least the, the bottom and the top something to aim at is I'm going to make something called uh, a null. And a null is just a group node that you make when you don't have anything selected. So with nothing selected, I'm just going to click off here in the background. I'm going to hit Control-G, and I get this null. And... Uh, I'll name this, uh, let's see, CL head PV group. So PV group just stands for pull vector. Um, and I, I want to get it lined up with the head. So that arrow is basically facing off one of the directions of um, the orientation of this head joint. So uh, one way I can get it lined up is just parent it under this head joint and zero it out. So I've got the CL head PV group. I'm going to parent it under that head joint. I'm going to zero it out, which puts it right there in the center and orient to the same direction. Uh, I'm going to uh, make sure I'm in, well, either either one, as long as I'm an object or local, as long as I'm not in world or something else, that should be fine because it's zeroed out, so object and local are the same thing now. Uh, go ahead and move it off to the side in a good distance. Uh, you know, too close can be a little bit much, but if you pull it out here, you should be fine. It doesn't have to be like a million miles away or anything like that, but you know, let's say, you know, past the elbow or shoulders or so at least. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that, and I'm going to unparent it now. So it doesn't stay parented under there. We don't want that because then we'd have a PV group driving the orientation of the IK handle, which drives the orientation of the joint, which that's parented under, which then we get into dependency loop. So uh, unparent that. And I need another one of those, and so I'm going to duplicate that one. And we'll rename this one neck base. I'm, I'm skipping the middle of the neck for now. Okay, so uh, there's one for the neck base, and I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, my point snap got permanently turned on there. Uh, and just FYI, that happens sometimes. Sometimes when I'm pulling point snap, I think it's when I do multiple actions at once, it leaves it on. Um, so just be aware, if, if pay attention to your, you know, center. If it's square, it's not on. If it's circle, it is. So you can sometimes uh, spot that. Okay, so um, I, I don't know why I'm point snapping it there. I just need to parent it under there and zero it out, just like we talked about. Let's do that again. Oops, wrong way. Grab the neck first, then the... Wait, no, other way. I'm thinking constraining. There we go. Okay, so it's parented under there. Zeroing it out. Unparenting. Actually, I'm going to leave it under there first. Transit it off to the side, and now unparenting. Okay. So, we have one for the um, one for the lower neck and one for the uh, head here. And let's go ahead and hook these up. So, uh, this neck base goes to the neck base. I'm selecting the thing I want it to follow and the thing I want to follow it next. Constrain, pull vector. When I turn this on, we shouldn't see anything in the neck move. So, yep, that was fine. And do the same for the head. I'm just going to hit G to repeat the last command. And that looks good too. Um, 
Okay, so now if I move these, they'll affect the rotation of the head. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, have them follow, in this case the head one, follow the head control. So now when I rotate the, the head control, it rotates the head. And I don't want that for the base here because you don't rotate your neck from the base really. It kind of stays fixed to your chest. So we'll have that one stick to the chest control. All right, so in this next one, um, I'm going to apologize because you're going to see me thinking on the fly here. I'm going to try an idea that just came to me, and we'll see if it works. And if not, we'll try something else. And I, I guess this is a little bit behind the scenes because usually I, I prep all this stuff ahead of time and make sure I get all my screw-ups out of the way first so I can just show you the clean version of doing it right, which is much more interesting to watch but probably not the best impression of viewing because then you just watch me go through and do it right once you know, the first time, which I guarantee you when I do this stuff all the time, um, I make mistakes left and right and always forget stuff. So uh, for the most part, I'm trying to edit that out so I don't confuse you guys and uh, and, and lead you down the wrong path of, of things you remember. Um, but I forget stuff all the time. So, you know, if you're not remembering this stuff, don't worry. I have to go look it up too and remember a thing here and there or build it wrong and undo it and have to go redo it. And it's just, you know, a thing of life. Um, so here's me going off an idea. So the original thought was I'm just going to make a control or something I could actually move to the middle of the neck because it may rotate too much and we want to counter animate it. Um, but if I could do rotation rather than move a floating point out here, you know, just build a control the same way we did this group and put it out here is one thing. But if I could build a group that's out here and then controlled by a control, that might be better. So I'm going to try that and we'll see how this works out. It, it may work, it may not. Who knows? Um, so let's see. What do I need? I need the same thing to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this uh, neck base. I'll delete the existing parent constraint under there. And we'll call it neck mid. And I'm going to parent it under the middle of the neck. No, not the IK handle, the actual joint. There we go. And looks like it's parented. Zero it out. Put it off to the side, just like the others. Unparent it. Okay, that looks good. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and constrain it to this IK handle. Uh, so grab uh, the PV group, the IK handle, constrain, pull vector. All right, so that one's controlled too, but I'm not going to have it follow the head just yet. Uh, and I'm trying to think of how I want to do this, because I kind of want it to twist with the head, but maybe that's not the right answer. Um, what I don't want is to have to... Why aren't the head control? You know what, I'm, I might... So I'm, what I'm thinking is if I put a control here on the neck, I could then use it, parent uh, this guy under that control, spin it from the neck, but that doesn't get me the motion of the head. Um, you know, it, it best could follow down here because if I if I parent it to this joint, which it, this node is controlling, then we'll get a dependency. Of it. Um, so I'd have to make a group down here that uh, that group follows this joint in its rotation. Um, put another group under that group, so it has a pivot point up here. So it's the same length as the joint, so it rotates as much as this joint does. Uh, and then we have a control there that I can spin to control that point. Um, the issue is then, is then I always have to manually twist the neck, do that. Um, which might be the better result, because if I put it, the, the other option is I could put it under the head control, but then it twists 100% with the neck and we want kind of a nice fall off. Um, and also when I move the head forward, uh, the PV group will be out farther than the side of the neck, which will make it inadvertently twist. Um, so I, I think I'm actually going to go with the, the control there because one, I'm counter animating and having to think about the position of my control a whole lot more, um, the, the head control to keep the neck from twisting. Um, the other, uh, I'll have to manually do, but, uh, that might be better than some of the other options. Um, you know, less animation. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to, 
I'm going to do that control there. So I'm going to steal one of these wrist or elbow controls here. So again, I'm going to grab my elbow control, pick walk up, duplicate it, and unparent it. I'm going to, it's down here now, point snap it to the base of my neck, and we'll, we'll orient this the other way. So I'm going to grab the base of the neck, constrain, orient. There we go. You know, and I don't, I don't really need to make two groups. Um, you know, it's just if I want the pivot point up there. Um, but if I lock the other rotations out, it won't matter. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna this visually. So uh, let's see. No, I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna move my pivot point back up. I'm trying to think the best way to do this. Because, okay, so here, here's the dilemma I'm getting into right now. Um, I want to keep this centered. Uh, and if I center the pivot, it'll be out farther because this little point, I want it right in the center of the circle. Uh, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a locator. Actually, first I'm going to turn on, uh, go over, select the NURBS curve, go to display, NURBS, CVs. And that's just showing me the CVs even when they aren't on. So this allows me, once they're showing, now I can point snap to them before I quit into it. We just look at it like a curve. Um, but now I can start to use that as a, a point. Uh, so I'm going to create a locator. And I'm going to parent it under this group too. And zero it out. And that, again, should get it oriented the same way. And I'm just going to make this up and point snap it somewhere around the curve. So now I know where the center point of my circle is. And here's what I can do. So I'm going to grab my NURB circle. I'm going to grab all my CVs. And it's still oriented the same way as its parent is, but the pivot point is the right spot. And so if I stay on my move tool, so if you're under rotate tool and um, let me explain what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to move the pivot point uh, of this in, in, while in CV mode, and then it'll allow me to move it from from there. So that's on my locator. Now, just notice if I switch my tools, like if I was on rotate and they go, all right, now I want to move, it moves back. Um, though there is oh, actually there's a trick for that, but by default it's going to move back. So start out in the tool that you want. Again, I'm holding down D and V now to point snap. It's on there. And I believe if you hit this little guy, I can't remember which one it is. I, no, I think it's this one. I think if you hit this um, while in pivot point mode, it locks it there. So now if I switch my tools, yep, now it's on the same. Well, no, now it went back. Whatever. We don't really need to do that. Oh, no. Now we are back. Weird. So I think it does, but not all the time. But anyway, move your pivot point there. Uh, so we're in the center. So now I can just point snap this down and be on the base of the neck. So the other thing I'm going to do here is turn on all my, well, I don't need all my meshes. I just need that one. And you know, I'll have this point out the back. Uh, the, the main reason for this arrow is just so I could tell the orientation. So as I'm twisting, it's kind of like a dial. So I could tell which ways, you know, how much it's twisted. Um, and I'll, I'll just keep that in the back here. Um, what I might do is just, make this point stick out a little bit farther. So, you know, easier to grab from the head. Um, let's see if I scale. Weird, why is my scale tool up? Oh, right, because I locked that pivot point. <laughs> let's unlock that. Not sure which one's which. Anyway, uh, Moving that pivot point down there, and so I'm just trying to make this diameter bigger than the base of the head. So again, it's easier to grab, and I'm just eyeballing this, trying to figure out where I'm happy with it. I'm not super happy with it because it clashes a little bit with the head control, but whatever, it's it's good enough. Okay, and actually, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna rotate it. Um, 90 degrees. And the reason for that, 
I'm going to have it face over this way. Now it's pointing to where the PV group is. So I, so I know that's where it's aiming. So wherever that arrow is, that's where the actual PV group is. And uh, should be able to uh, tell me where it's at. So I'm going to go, I, I want to get rid of these CVs. So go back to display, it's like the NURBS curve display, NURBS, CVs, turn that back off. Uh, this thing's all zeroed out. Uh, let's name this. CL neck control. And CL neck CT group. Okay, I don't need that locator anymore. That was just to help me find that center point so I could move my control and keep it nice and clean. Um, so it's still orient constraint. Well, I'm actually, you know, I'm going to delete this orient constraint and just simplify it with a parent constraint. So selecting the thing I want it to strain to, selecting the, uh, the neck CT group, constraint, parent. Now it should follow the base of the neck. Again, I don't want to constrain it to this point because I'm going to drive the rotation of this joint with that PV group. So if I stuck to this one, then we'd be in a dependency because that PV group controls the rotation of this. The control will be following the rotation of that. The control drives the rotation of the PV group, which, you know, again, so we ended that infinite loop and Maya can't solve it. Um, so let me put this all together and make sure I still haven't ended up in a dependency loop. Um, and we'll see how this, this looks. Uh, let's see. Um, so I'm going to have select the thing I want to follow the neck, have this PV group follow the neck, constrain parent. And that should do the twisting, though there's nothing to see. Well, let's let's make another locator, because, again, I could show you this if I had skin waiting, but, you know, locators are a good way to test often, is just go make a locator, throw it under your joint, zero it out, and now you have something visually that you can see what's going on. So if I rotate this control in X, turn my discrete rotate off. Yep, I can see my locator twisting there. That's what we want. So again, I, I'm doing this rather than the parenting under the head control because the head control will move 100% and we, we want fall off. We don't want, the center of your neck doesn't twist 100% with the rest of your head. It actually probably twists less than 50%. So it probably makes sense to just hand key that stuff rather than, um, you know, constantly counter animating the rest of the head. Because most of the time you won't, you could probably get away with not twisting it versus having the counter twist it all the time. So we'll still always have to adjust it, but it's it's a better option. And the IK handle gets us some nice motion as we're moving the head around. So you'll see that here in a second. So um, now we need the IK handle to actually follow the head control. So we'll do that for the first two. Um, and if you remember what I talked about when I moved the IK handles around before, it base the next too much. So we'll see what happens when it's just the upper part of the head. So I have the head control, head IK, constrain, parent. We'll do the same thing for the mid of the neck. Okay, so let me move this around now. And base the neck staying in place still. Uh, head moves around, but that's too much motion for there. But again, when we had all three moving, it was too much motion at the base. And we want it to only follow partially with the head uh, and mostly stay in line with the chest. So we'll actually do that. We'll, we'll have it follow both the head and the chest. So you could add constraints uh, to multiple objects. So we're going to grab the uh, head control and then the chest control and then uh, grab that neck base IK. So uh, b before I jump into this, I, let me explain something too. So some of you may be wondering this whole time, well, why is it to parent something I select in one order and it seems like it's the opposite order for parent constraints and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's it's how many things can get parented in there. So the reason you select the, ch the children first and then the parent uh, when you're parenting is because you can select multiple things and parent them under one object. So select all the multiples first and then the final thing, complete your operation of parenting. Constraints is the opposite way. Um, you can constrain one object to follow many things. So that's the many things you're selecting first and that's why you select the thing it's going to follow first rather than the following things first, like when, with parenting, because I could grab multiple controls here and tell this one control to follow all those controls, 
So that's that's a slight difference in that. So if that seems confusing and backwards, that's why it's because of the operations. It's the the one thing that is left behind being the the last thing of the the operation. So you grab all those other things first, and just whatever's last is the thing that's being constrained to, or in that in the other case being dropping all those other objects and parenting it under that final object. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Still don't know why they can start with the first one, but um, that's the pattern I've seen. So side note. Um, so let's actually consider this. So again, I've got the, the head selected, the chest selected, and then the neck base IK. I'm going to do constrain parent, and that's added, and I'm going to go into uh, grab my neck base IK, unfold it, and look for that parent constraint and select it. And here you can see the options for this. So what we have is it weighted one to, uh, with a weight of one to the head control and a weight of one to the chest control. And it's basically saying 100%, 100%. Uh, and that will act like 50%, 50%. Um, but we want something more like uh, 20%, 80%. And so that's what I'll switch it to. So 0.2 for the head and 0.8 for the chest. So let's go ahead and move this now. That seems a little bit more in, like natural head motion. You can see uh, this neck controller is following along with the base motion because it's parented down here. It's not controlling in the upper motion, which the IK handle is controlling, and we can still twist it to get neck rotations. Uh, so also IK handles constrained sometimes don't undo well. It's the way the operands happened, um, you know, the way it's solving the math. If you see stuff like this happen, just go and tear it out. It's not that your rig's broken, it's just the the IK handles didn't get the command of, hey, go back to where we were last time. So if you just, you know, whatever your thing's in position-wise, you can move a little bit um, or just, you know, select the existing numbers and hit enter. Or, or just even one number, I think, will do it and hit enter. And then we go like, oh, we need to go update, and then they'll, they'll jump back. So you'll see that sometimes with IK handles. Um, I can't recreate it always, but when it happens, that, that's the deal. It's not your rig's broken. Just, you know, hit a keyframe or, or you know, punch in a new number in here, and it should update, I think. So, all right, there's our head control and our neck control. Um, so that, that's, that's really all we need. So... It, just a little bit on how this thing works. For the most part, you'll be able to get most of it with rotation, and this is why we use IK, because see how you get that little bit of motion as you're rotating the head. Um, that's a bonus, and then plus if you need to move the neck, you could also move the head. Uh, if you move it too far, it starts you know, not orienting the same way as the head control is. Um, and you'll notice, again, we get a little bit of twisting happening there. That's because that RP solver is out here with the head control. Um, so something just to keep in mind, you know, it's something that I've had a little issue with. You know, and some animators don't get it, but if you keep it mostly on the head, you should be fine. Uh, if this is too much for your animation, remember, then trying to figure out why they keep getting the kinked head. Um, uh, you could always just do straight up FK. You know, this is the fancier version because some people want to learn how to do this. You know, we covered FK in the FK arms. If you want to do that for the head, it's the same setup. You know, we, we basically did it with the neck here to some extent, too. Um, but FK is pretty easy. It's just orient, you know, so if it's a control like this, you know, make a control, group it, move the group to this point, orient it to this joint, delete the orient constraint if you made an orient constraint, or you know, if you zeroed it out, just unparent it after that, and then uh, have the joint follow that control. That's as simple as that is. And then you, you could either parent them or uh, the controls in the same hierarchy that you want them to move, or you could parent constrain them to the joint before them. So, like, uh, like we did here, you know, if, if I was uh, parent constraining all the FK controls, so this one drives the shoulder, so the CT group would be parent constrained to the clavicle. Um, so you can do that in the head. So anyway, uh, on to the eyes. So uh, here's my beady little eyes in here. Let's go ahead and turn back on the mesh so we get reference of where we're at. So the eyes are in the center point of that sphere and aiming towards the center of the pupil. So they, they do look down a little bit. Um, as far as their overall positioning. Um, so something to be aware of. <clears throat> um, for this, we'll, we'll make two controls uh, for each eye to aim at. So one for the left eye, one for the right eye. So each gets one. That's the two controls. And then we'll make a third control 
that's the parent of both those controls, the, the left eye and the right eye, to move both eyes in tandem. Um, in a pinch, you could use NURB circles. Uh, I've gone ahead of time here uh, and made fancier controls that are down here. Um, and so just, just a couple of NURB circles that I reshaped and uh, some text, and then I used uh, the, the script that I showed in how to make controls, uh, parent uh, dash shape dash relative, uh, and then the name of any of the curve shapes, and then finally the, you know, so like the curve shape of the letter, the curve shape of this circle, and then say the parent shape, uh, or the parent group of the shape, this one. So it would be like L shape, whatever this, this name is. You can see them right here. Left eye control shape, left eye control shape one, and curve shape one. Those are all the shapes that I parented under this node. So uh, if you don't understand that, go back and watch that video. I show that little snippet. Um, but they're, they're already set up. So they, whoops, they have, uh, you know, their group nodes, everything's zeroed out. Um, I think everything is roughly the scale. I already moved it up by the head and figured out what a, a decent scale was. So what we're going to do is move this up to the head here. And I'm going to hide my mesh again. It's going to get in our way. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to leave this in the center as far as X is concerned, so up and down the middle. Um, I'm going to uh, and again I'm moving the CT group, not the control itself. Point snap it in Z to where the eyes are, and point snap it in Y to the uh, where the eyes are. And uh, let's see, what I need is uh, these controls to line up right with where the eyes are. So again, I'm going to grab the, this left eye control, pick walk up, and point snap it to where the eye is. Same with the right eye, put, uh, pick walk up to the CT group, point snap it to where the eye is. So now these should be the same distance from, from the eyes. When I pull it out farther, you know, the eyes can aim straight at these, and again, the, the joints won't budge. Um, and we have to be sure about that. I, I, I'm pretty sure I built these so they're oriented facing, you know, they may be down at an angle, but they should be you know, straight ahead, and you know, they shouldn't be shifting off to the left or right. They should be looking straight ahead, just slightly down. Um, so to be sure of that, I'm going to go to my handy little locator aimer and just check this theory out. Because um, I want to be right about that. Uh, again, want joints I could always zero out. And I'm going to go find my... find my eyes. I'm going to grab one of these joints that will start to help direct me there, so I can just follow the blue path so I don't have to read as much. Okay, so lit up, lit down. Okay, there's my left eye. I'm going to parent this locator under the left eye. And where's my right eye? There it is. Okay, I'm going to zero both these locators out so they're angled the same way as my eye is. Okay. Um, let's see, now I need to make sure, because that's where the eyes are aiming, I need to make sure my control is not moved just straight ahead, but down at that same angle. So I'm going to kind of do the same trick I've been doing here. Uh, I'm going to get the CT group, so I pick walk up, and let's look at my CT group. Um, I'm going to pair it on this locator, so I can move it in local space. And that way I move at the same angle those eyes are at. So I'm going to go ahead and turn back on my geometry here. Let's figure out how far I want to move those eyes. Actually, yeah, I think I'm happy with that, right? Well, yeah, I heard about there. I don't want it too close to the head. Okay. So, turn back off my polygons. I'm going to unparent it from this locator. And, you know, actually, I want to make sure that these are lined up exactly. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to duplicate these two locators, unparent them. I'm going to move them out here. I'm going to parent one under each one of these eye controls and zero it out. And this part isn't necessary for building the rig so much as it is just making sure that I'm I'm using different ways to measure and make sure this thing is straight. Similar to how like we build those those temporary joints to figure out the pull vectors for the knees and the elbows. 
Um, this is another way I'm doing that of just measuring to make sure this stuff lines up. So what I'm doing is I've, I've made two locators here, and that just means I could point snap to the center of these controls because there's nothing there to point snap to otherwise. And I'm going to take these uh, locators, and I can move them in local or object space, doesn't matter because they're oriented the same way as the parent. And I'm going to hold down V and only move an X here because that's aiming down towards those eye controls. And if I snap to that locator, again, I'm on left or right, it should be right on there. Yeah, that looks pretty much centered. I mean, if it's off a little bit, let's well, here. Let's undo the rotations. So I'm going to unparent this, zero it out. Yep, those are lined up just exactly. So I'm going to assume my other eyes the same way. Should do my due diligence, but this stuff gets boring to watch at some point. Um, so I, I know that this is a straight shot down to there, so I don't have to move my left and right eye out a little more. So if, here's the deal. If that was off, you know, if it was off to the side over here, I would simply just point snap my CT group of this control off to that point and that point, and that way I'd know it's lined up. So if you have eyes that face out to the sides a little bit because your, your creature's a little bit more animalistic in, in some way, um, that's how you do it. So you'd, you'd pull these out and, um, you know, if they were out over here somewhere, uh, when you point, after you point snapped, you just move your control off to the side to, to that point, and now you're, you know they're lined up. Um, but we don't have that issue, so I'm going to go ahead and undo all that. Okay, so I don't need these locators anymore. They were just there to measure with. Um, and we're going to start to hook this up. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to tell these joints to aim to these controls. Uh, and we're going to use an aim constraint to do that. Um, but uh, there's one thing I want to add in here. So aim constraint, so let's, let's go ahead and grab my eye here. Um, one of my joints. Got the left eye. So you can see that X is facing back, Z is up, uh, Y is off to the left. And that's the same orientation we're talking about, so we get the, the type of rotation numbers we're looking for in here, of, of which way is positive, which way is negative. Um, so we'll be able to point uh, X to there, no problem. But unless we give it something else to aim at, it won't really know where to point uh, Z or or Y. Um, so we need to tell it which direction to do that to, to also. Um, and again, this is another area where I'm going, I got two ways I think I could do this, and I'm going to try one and hopefully not tell you guys, steer you guys the wrong way the first time. But if I do, uh, we'll do it the other way. And it, you know, This is part of rig building. You try stuff and you're like, does this work the way I'm expecting it to? Yes or no? And then if it does, great. If not, doesn't, and then even half the time you'll you'll find out like that motion by itself worked out fine, but then when you compound it with like the motion of the head and the body and the whole body moving, um, something gets off, and now you have to go figure out how to compensate for that. So again, probably at this point, probably good to start to see a little bit of that process happening uh, as I flounder my way through this. Um, so we're gonna tell uh, this eye joint to aim at this control. So I'm gonna grab the control first, grab the left eye joint. Uh, constrain. Actually, let me. Whoops, that was not right. Um, I want to look at orientation of the control real quick. So this one's different. So Y is up. Okay. So I'll I'll just remember Y is up on there, where Z is up on the eye control, and we'll see if that matters here in a second or not. Um. Okay. So grabbing the control, grabbing the left eye joint. Constrain, uh, go up to constrain, aim, bring open the options. So I'm going to go ahead and reset these first. So the first thing I want is maintain offset on. Uh, if it's slightly off, I don't want it to readjust, especially when it comes to the orientation of this joint. Um, let's see. So the aim vector is, is x, but in our case, it's facing backwards, so I'm pretty sure I want that to be negative so that it, it's facing backwards and it, you know, again, this is all part of it not rotating as I do this. Um, and this is a bit of a guess and check, too, because I'll look at this and uh, adjust it as I go. If, if it doesn't turn out right, then I can tweak the numbers. Um, up vector, I think, is is the thing that's aiming, not the, the thing we're aiming at. In this case, it's Z. So I'm going to switch 
my up vector from so each one of these places is x y z. Uh, I'm going to switch that one to zero and this one to one. So that means z is my up vector. Um, and then we have world up type. Um, we want to be able to control how these are facing, especially relative to the head. So as the head's tilting left and right, um, that uh, the the eyes are staying relative to that. Um, and let's see. I know we need object rotation up. I'm just debating in my head right now. Do I use this control here as object up type, or do I make uh, another invisible null here that's parented to the head? So the head leans back and forth. And this is where I start to get bad, is when I have to start compounding these layers of motion of like, okay, well, is the eye control staying relative to the head, or does it free float and, uh, you know, the head moves independently of the rotations of the, the eye control? Um, not that I can have options to do either one of those, but, you know, I'm thinking in what happens in that scenario. Um, and I... You know, I think I still want it, you know, I don't want the eyeballs twisting. That's the thing. So if the head's leaning over to the side and this is still up, that means my eyeballs would twist if this is still facing up and not tilted with the head. So I, what I think I'm going to do is is make a null. Um, oops. I'm hitting Control N because I want to make a null. That's not right. Control G with nothing selected. Um, N for null, right? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so I'm going to name this... Uh, See, I up vector group. So again, just a name explaining what this thing is, and I know it's a group node. Um, and what I'll do is, let's see, I'm going to figure out where I want to put it. Oops, don't need to change my filter searches. Um, let's see, I'm going to point snap it to the base of the head here. And just translate it straight up. And actually, you know, I'm going to point snap it to above the eyes. Okay. So I'm going to copy the name because I'll need that in a second. Uh, and then I'm going to parent constrain that to follow the head, the head joint, not the head control. Because again, I want it to stay up relative over the eyes. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and grab the things that I actually want to constrain again. Oh, and I collapse my. Okay. So select the control, shift. Oh, by the way, so this is getting to be long here, going up and down, back and forth. So if I. There's this little bar at the bottom here of my outliner. If I pull this up, I can have two versions of it. Uh, this one's still kind of the real one, so I can still rename things up here if I want, but I can't down here. Um, you see I double click all I want, it won't let me rename up here. So I either have to do that over here or over here, but I can still select things, parent them differently. Um, so this is nice for being able to get two things at once if you need to. Okay, so we're back in here, still have the same settings, so negative one's our aim vector because our joint's facing backwards. Z is our up, so changed uh, y from 1 to 0 and z to 1. We're going to use object up, uh, rotation up. So uh, basically what that means is it's going to look at the, the orientation of whatever, or at least the rotation of whatever object we paste in here, our i up vector group that we just made, which follows the overall position of the head, and says whatever direction that's up is up for this guy. Um, and this is the part where I'm not so certain. So Y is up for it, so I think that's what I want for that number. But I could be wrong. It could be Z because that's the thing we're orienting to again. Um, so we'll, we'll switch that. Uh, or we'll leave that and we'll switch it if it's wrong. Uh, all this other stuff you can leave the same. We want to constrain all axes. Uh, set layer to override. I don't know what that means. Don't know what that one does. Probably says in the help file. Never used it. Um, so let's go ahead and, so I've got all my settings set here, uh, grab my left eye control, grab my left eye, and click apply. Alright, so my locator still seems to be in the same spot, that's good. I'm going to grab that locator, pick walk up, okay, everything is zeroed out, that still seems good. And let's watch it as it moves and see if that's 
what we're looking for. Seems to be tracking well, doesn't seem to be leaning off to one side or anything like that really. Alright, let's see how it does with head leaning. Alright, good. So we can see it staying up relative with the head. That's that's what we want. So hooray, I did it right in the first try. And IK is not resetting. What's the deal? I think that's right. Anyway. I think that's me, just stuff not aligned. I, it looks like it's not rotated correctly, but it, it looks okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, that's just me thinking stuff. All right, so we want to do the same thing for the other eye. Uh, and we're, we're going to use the same eye up factor for the right eye. We don't need two. We just, you know, it, it's looking at whatever the road rotation of the head is. Um, and so I'm going to grab my right eye control. And where is my right eye? There it is. And click apply again. So now if I move this control, which moves both those controls, hooray, it's, it's looking at it. So... Um, that's the start of this, um, but uh, we want to tweak this some still. Um, so here's the issue that we get as, as far as aiming properly. Um, the head's around, the eyes kind of you know, around and moving the spheres. So as you move off over to here, it, it starts to skew the angle that the eyes are at because you know these aren't relative. So this it becomes a wider and wider gap as you move off to the side. Um, so here's a little trick we'll use. We're going to do an aim constraint uh, back to the head again. Um, and I'm trying to think if I need another up vector for this or not. Um, I think I do. So I'm going to duplicate the one that we made before. And I'm going to delete its uh, constraint. I'm going to parent it under this, well, where it is doesn't really matter. It's about the rotation. Um, but the difference, oh, right, I can't rename it here. Uh, the difference is I don't want this one being oriented the same way as the head. So I don't want it twisting side to side because that may not be how I want it to look. I might want the head twisted, but the eye is still locked on to whatever you know, I've positioned in front of and not have to deal with the twisting at the same time. Because your eyes track as your head moves. You, could, you can move your head side to side. Um, and your eyes will stay in place at whatever they're looking at. So we want to maintain that. So if, we're, if it's rotating with the head rotating, then your eyes aren't staying fixed. Um, we'll just name this one eye control up vector. Again, I'm going to copy the name so I can paste it in here in a second. Uh, but that'll just stay fixed to the world. So it's not rotating around with the character. It's just however the world is. Um, and I think that's what we want for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it aim towards the head and that way as it rotates, as we position it around, because there's no real reason to rotate this. And there is tilting, but we'll add that back in a second here. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab the head, and we're actually going to put this one on the control, because when we move the control, we need the control to move, not the, the CC group, because that may be way off over here, where we've moved the control over here. So we're going to, un we're going to take away our rotations, but we'll still have control over rotating it to a certain extent. Um, so we're going to go back to Constrain. Uh, aim, bring open the options. I'm going to change my up vector, and now I need to again look at my control. And uh, in this case, we want Z to aim towards this. So change this to zero, and it's Z is facing off this way, so it'd be negative Z facing that way. So negative one. Um, y is up in this case, so change that to one for our up vector. So up vector is direction points. Aim vector is the direction you want it to aim. Um, and then up vector should be, uh, world up vector should be the same because it's the same node, just, you know, we made a duplicate. Let's go ahead and click apply. And good, that's on our eye target. Um, everything's zeroed out still. And now we move to the side. It's always aiming towards the head, so the, the eyes are always aiming there, so we, we keep relative position. Um, so cool. Um, but we still might want to uh, tilt this side to side. So let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an attribute on here for that first. So let's we'll call this tilt. 
and we're going to go look at um, and just uh, jumping ahead here. So when we actually give this the animators, we'll lock and hide these. They they do not get to play with rotate. Um, we don't want them overriding our constraint. They're just going to translate this into moving. They don't, they don't even need scale. There's no reason to scale uh, this because they're going to translate everything. So they, they could rotate an individual eye if they want, but I don't think that's actually going to be able to do much anyway. Um, and not something eyes usually do anyhow. Um, so I'm finding this aim constraint node so I can grab it here. And I'm going to open up the uh, attribute editor so you can start to see something. And in here we have something called offset. Uh, when we checked on maintain offset, that's accounting for the existing rotations on there to keep it aiming the direction it is. Because otherwise it would it would point down here. It would have you know aimed down here, but our eyes are up here. Um, so this offset is what keeps it from uh, being you know, aiming down at this point. Um, and again, what each one of these is X, Y, and Z. So if we wanted tilting, whoops, that's not what I want. Uh, we'd want to rotate in Z here to be able to tilt left and right. Um, but we already have a value in there. Um, but we could just add on to that. So uh, here is how I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to make a multiply or an add node here. Let's let's go ahead and. Uh, go into the hypergraph and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. And whoops. And this is similar to how we made uh, the multiply divide node earlier. So I'm going into rendering, uh, render, create render nodes. And I think it's under utilities, so here we go. Plus minus average. And basically it's, it's three operations. I get to pick which one, and I want uh, some. And uh, we want to do input 1D. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do on it is uh, make a custom attribute on it so I get the existing number in this offset. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that negative 0 0.244 in this case. And modify, add attribute, and change that to fault of uh, so I'm going to name this offset z, the existing offset z. Okay, so that's in there. I'm going to uh, open up my connection editor, and this is going to be a case where I'm plugging in a node into itself. So it's going to be both the input and the output. And I'm going to take that offset Z and plug it into input 1D. And now we get this down here. Um, so what that does is, so what we have here is input 1D, output 2D, output 3D. And the difference are between these, is, so offset Z is for single number. Um, so just we only have one number to plug in. Um, two is if you had like a, a texture, so you know, X, X and Y coordinates or U, of v, U and V coordinates for UVs, um, those would plug in here nicely and be able to track both those numbers if you had some attribute like this. Uh, output 3D is for vector type numbers, so like how under translate you have translate XYZ or rotate XYZ, you could just like rotate and plug it in here and it tracks all three axes to plug in there. Uh, but in this case we only have one number, so we're just plugging that in. Uh, and input 1D is a little bit interesting, so you know I was able to click on that first and adds this, and it'll just keep adding input, you know, 1D0, input 1D1, input 1D2 for each thing I plug in. Um, if I click on this again, it'll just replace it over input 1D. So the rest of this I'll have to do with script, um, and which is easy enough because the first time I do it, it spits out script of how it connect. Uh, Made that connection, so I'm just going to copy that right there. It's connection, uh, connect uh, attribute. So connect attribute, uh, flag f, so dash f, um, plus minus average dot offset z. So here's the name of the node, here's the attribute, and here again is the name of the node and what plugging uh, what we're plugging it into. Um, so what we're going to do is go find my control here. So we made tilt on here. 
and we're going to take the tilt attribute of actual. And again, this is why I never capitalize because uh, the first letter, because sometimes I have to. Oops, not tilt or title tilt. Um, because uh, I don't have to guess if that's capital or not, because I'll have to type it in in cases like this. And then rather than saying uh, input 1D 0, I'm going to put in 1 here. And that way it'll say add 0 to 1. And so if we go back in my connection editor, and, oh, whoops, wrong thing selected. I'm going to grab that plus minus average, and look at its 1P, or uh, input 1D we have uh, input 1D0 and input 1D1. So what we've said here is we plugged in the offset Z, so that's our original offset, and add it to uh, whatever we add on to tilt. And then we can take that output and we'll plug it into the offset of this so we could tilt this thing but continue to offset it too so we don't lose its original position. So reloading uh, the plus minus average, and let me name this guy. And when I name these, I tend to take off whatever one it's supposed to be, you know, the stuff that it isn't doing. Um, so I control plus. I don't know. But good enough. Um, so that's the name of that guy. And then we're going to take our, um, our aim constraint and load that up to the input. So we want to take the output 1D. So the sum of the original offset number that we plugged in, plus whatever we add on with the tilt, and plug it into, I'm going to find that offset. It's in here somewhere. I just got to dig it out. It may be grayed out because we're only looking for a single number. So I'll have to unfold it to be able to see it. If I can't find it in here, I'll do it by uh, by scripting again. Oh, there we go. Offset. Right there at the end. So offset Z. And now if we look at the attributes in here, that's plugged in there. And we still have the exact same thing. Let's, let's undo that real quick. So you can see as I as I add it again, that guy doesn't budge. And if we did this right, now when I use this tilt, there we go, we start getting rotations on there. So it's a little bit wonky because of the, the rotation gimbal setup on there. Um, if Ideally what we want to do is probably set the rotation order up to something Let's see if we can do this without it changing uh, position. If it does, not a big deal. If it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Um, all right, you know, it's Z, so we want something that is on the end. Let's let's look at this guy's rotation gimbal. Make sure it. It seems to be going at a weird angle as we do that. So let's do all my tilt there. Let's change the rotation gimbal. So Z's the first. It's the, the one moving everything else currently. Um, let's make it something that just free twists and see what happens. Um, so we're in X, Y, Z. Let's try Z, Y, X and see if that gets us a little bit... Yeah, that looks better. Now it's it's not... It doesn't seem to be twisting at an angle so much. Well, it is a little bit as we go over. But whatever, it's still close enough. It still starts to get us rotation. It's really just about trying to get us something that orients with the head more. It's not something you will actually re really need all that much anyhow, also. So, there's our eye control. Move it around. Eyes follow. Great. Okay, um, so the last stuff we got to do is all this facial control stuff, um, which it looks like there's a lot in here, but it's it's all FK controls. Um, that's all we're going to do is just hooking up FK controls to all these. 
um, I may I may do all of these. I may not. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll start to get the gist of this as we go, hopefully. But I'll show you how I'm making the controls at least. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file right here, and uh, let's go ahead and turn back on our mesh again here real quick, and just remember we're, what we're doing. Um, so this one's a good example. This is going to be the outer brow, and this one's going to be the inner brow, um, because those are where we need the pivot points. Um, and I'll talk a little bit here in this case about how I think about making these controls. So I want something I can, again, easily see from any angle, but also easily recognize. Um, and in this case, I'm going to trace some of the existing geometry to start to make guides to kind of show me which part I'm working with. Um, and uh, well, let's just go through it, and I'll, I'll make some arrows too. And, and some of these controls I'll, I'll make ahead of time, uh, just for the sake of time. So I'm going to turn my mesh back on, go on to wireframe unshaded, and I'm just going to trace uh, this existing geometry, probably just the eyebrow, because that's the part we're rigging up, uh, with a CV curve. And you know, in the CV curve tool, make sure I'm on linear in this case. And for the outside of the brow, I can go to pull down the V key and just kind of trace part of this eyebrow. Oops. Double click there. Not that that really matters. But. All right, so there's one shape. And I'm going to skip a section and just. Uh, oops. Holding down the wrong key uh, for point snap. So again, just holding down the V key and tracing this shape out so I have something I can identify with each part of the brow. And I'll go ahead and turn wireframe unshaded off. And now actually ahead of time I went and made uh, an arrow control. So I'm going to go find that and unhide it here. And uh, this will be just it always points to the joint. So even if I'm working with the mesh on or something like that, I can tell which joint I'm working with um, as I go through here. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this once. And uh, let's see. Um, First off, what I'm going to do is, uh, so this is going to be about m making this control, but this, so here's kind of the deal. I, I've got this control over here that I want to kind of fit around the eyebrow. I'll, I'll pull it out a little bit and scale it up here in a second. Um, but then I also have this arrow that I want to face directly in. So how do I build both those together and get them oriented and then combine them into one object so I don't have two different shapes here? And so that's kind of what we'll be covering in this part. So I'll do it with two controls and then we'll fast forward through the rest. Um, so I'm going to hide my geometry again. And I, I need to make a CT group for all these. So I'm just going to make that on its own to start with. So I'm going to have nothing selected. Hit Control-G to group. There's my null. I'm just going to copy the name off here. Oops, not paste. Copy. Um, I'm going to pull this down, actually, so I'm working in just one full screen so I can rename this stuff. So left brow, CT group. Do I need them both left brow? No, left brow in. Brown. I forgot the name there. So, uh, if you're watching this, uh, if you build your own ring rig, you know, just make sure you got these named properly. Um, if you're using one of the ones I did, I will have gone back and fixed this by the time you're doing it. So, okay, left brow out and left brow in. Okay. All right. So happy with that and update that name. Okay, so I'm going to grab uh, that joint, grab that CT group, constrain point, constrain orient. Again, just another way to get it in place so it's in the same place, same orientation, and delete those uh, constraints. So now it's all lined up. So now, if I grab my arrow here, which has its um, pivot point right at the end of the arrow, parent it under that CT group, zero it out. So now it's it's lined up with that, but it's not quite in the right position. So I'm going to go to rotate. I'm going to make sure I have my discrete rotate on. Whoops, going the wrong way here. All right, so that's 90 degrees out and not quite twisted the way I want. Oh, I'm in gimbal lock, so I'm going to freeze transformations. 
and get local here. And that's that's the angle I wanted at. It's just not long enough now, so I'm getting enough freeze rotations or freeze transformations on that, so it's zeroed out. Go into component mode here, and in object or local mode, pull it out a good distance to where I'm kind of happy with where it's aiming. That seems a little bit low. Maybe I didn't orient this quite right, but double check my joint here. And by the way, if, if you're not happy with it at this point, now is the time to fix it. Don't skin it up and try to fix it later. Um, do it now. Hmm. Well, it seems a little bit off, but if I feel like fixing it, I will go and do that sometime after this video. I will just show you guys uh, now how I'm doing it. Um, but to me that seems a little bit low for actually being the brow. Um, so I might go tweak that here in a little bit. But for now I'm going to leave it uh, because only so much video to show you guys all this stuff. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing for the other. Well, actually, let's, let's finish one control first before I do a second. Um, so I've got this all lined up. Uh, I want to put this control under there as well. So I'm going to parent this under the uh, the CT group. Uh, it's got a pivot point still at the base though, uh, at the origin from when I originally built it. So what I'm going to do is modify freeze rotations, which zeroes everything out, and then I'm going to do reset transformations, which moves the pivot back to its local origin, which happens to be the CT group. So now it's lined up the exact same way this curve is, as far as the pivot point is concerned. Um, and now I can go and uh, combine these, because they're both in the same position, same orientation. So let's go ahead and type in our script. Parent, shape, relative, and we'll grab the shape node of one of these. And then grab the group node name. Ta-da, they're one object. And it leaves behind this group node, the empty group node, so you've unparented the, the shape node from the group node. So. After that, I just go delete it, and let's name this guy. There. Okay, so that's how we go and make a control. So it's it's all oriented after this. It's grab the control, grab the joint, constrain, parent. And now we have something driving that joint. Simple as that. You know, it's just FK controls. That's why I kind of breeze over this stuff because it's, you know, boring like nothing else to watch me do this. But uh, once I got these all oriented, it's just all FK. So this is FK. Um, actually, I'm going to jump ahead to the tongue real quick here because I think I made only three joints for the tongue and this one was just to orient it. Yep. So I'm going to delete that. But So, you know, I'll just make like three circles for the tongue inside here. Uh, I'll make something to rotate the jaw. Um, Oh, also, here's one caveat. So, uh, I think when I parented all these in the first video of the skeleton, I parented them all into the head, and then I realized uh, all the lower lip stuff. So, left lower lip. Here, let's. Yeah, left lower lip, CL lower lip, and uh, lower teeth, and the right lower lip joint all get parented into the jaw. So that way, when the character opens its their mouth, you know, the lower lips and the teeth with it the same way the the tongue should and all that. Um, so I, I think another thing I missed in my original video. So do that too. Again, not a hard change to make at this point. Won't, it won't change your orientations. So I'm going to make uh, one more control here and for the other brow and do the same thing. We'll see if I got it lined up better than the first one. Um, going to make a new null, so nothing selected. Made a group. I believe that's my group. Brow in. I'm just copying and pasting because I'm lazy and don't want to retype it as much as possible. And, Potentially that's faster, but I'm not actually sure that it is. Um, point and orient constrain it. Um, all right, so that's all lined up. I'm going to parent this other curve that I made under that group. Zero it out. 
rotate it to get it into place. Again, I got my discrete snap on, so um, it uh, goes in 90 degrees nicely. Uh, and then I'll go into component mode here and extend this out. And every time I do that, I turn back on the mesh just to see how far I'm sticking. I'm happy with that distance or not. So I don't want to stick too far out, and so it's not this giant clutter that's moving around, but I want it, as it rotates in, it doesn't disappear inside geometry. So, and, and this is a much better placement. I, you know, I was expecting this to be up here. So, uh, you know, if you go look at the final rig, this will be adjusted. Um, easy fix. I'm just not going to do it right at this moment. Actually, you know what? Let's, there's time. There, there's always time. You guys can fast forward through this if you don't want to watch it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fix this because it's bugging the hell out of me. I'm going to pick walk down on this joint, delete the parent constraint I made. Um, or am I? If I leave it on, let me s no, because the joint needs to follow that. So, but I'm going to try something the other way around. What if I? Well, no, because I already made the shape into one. So. I'll, I'll duplicate this and then make two shapes. Well, no, I'm just going to remake this. That's what I'll do. So I still got this control over here. I'm going to duplicate it. So, all right. So here's I'm going to fix this. Um, I'm going to use this control to show me where I'm pointing as I do this. Um, and so nothing's controlling the joint anymore. Constrain. Uh, parent, I think this will update as I'm moving the LRA now. Uh, I need to turn my discrete rotate off. Yep. So, turn on my polygons. And I'm, I'm going to ignore the brow shape uh, that I made. I'm just going to focus on the arrow. And wherever the arrow gets into a, a spot that I'm happy with, that's my new placement. So this is probably a good example, easy way to how to go fix this stuff once uh, you, you realized something's off. So I'm going to delete that. Um, I shouldn't have to reorient this because that's correct. Uh, what I do need to do is, let's double check, make sure no rotations happen on there. Great. I'm going to find the one on the right side, delete it, grab this joint, skeleton, your joint, make sure my settings are still the same. They are. There we go. So I've got left and right side. And so I'm just going to go ahead and remake this control now. Again, again, the CT group should be fine itself. I just need to make a control that's oriented properly, which is what we'll do again. Turn back on my discrete rotate. OK. And turn back on geometry. I'm going to retrace out that shape. Shading wireframe, or yeah, wireframe unshaded. Holding down the V key. And part of the reason I want to do this is just to, yeah, you have to redo stuff sometimes. You screw it up, but just swallow that pill and do it. Some people get really attached to the work and they just, it can be, it can be hard to go redo stuff. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that there's times I walk away from the computer when I realize I need to redo something, and it's just like, okay, it's break time right now because I can't go make this again right now emotionally. Um, but it's not a big deal. So just get used to doing it. Um, it, it happens to everybody. It happens to professionals. Um, you know, fact of life, and then you fix it, and then it works great, and it's not a problem anymore. So I uh, parented that under, there, under the CT group, so I'm going to go modify freeze transformations, that zeroes it out, reset transforms, moves the pivot point back to its local origin. Um, do the same here with this guy. I just need to do freeze transformations because the pivot's already there. And we'll parent the shapes again. Parent-shape-relative paste in the shape name, and then paste in the group name of the other control. Hit enter. Delete the empty group node. And again, if you didn't freeze transformations, one of these would jump off to be in a different position, so it's 
rotations are relative to what the, the, the other control you're parenting under. So that's why we always freeze transformations in there. So now that's a, a brow control that I am happier with its position. That makes more sense. It's kind of on the center of the brow now. Same with this guy. You know, it's a little bit low, but close enough. Um, so uh, I haven't combined him yet, though. And there's the other curve, parenting it under there, uh, under the CT group, modify, uh, freeze transformations, reset transformations, freeze transformations on this guy, and same deal. You know, I just did the script, I'm just going to copy and paste it and replace the names. So, curve 10 and 12. Okay, hit enter. Those are all one shape now. Yep, uh, it's just hard to see because I got wireframe on the competing for the view. So that's good. That's still just kind of right on top of my actual geometry though. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is grab both these curves. Probably should have done this before I combined them. It would have been easier to just focus on the brow shapes, but now I have to be a little bit more ginger with my selections. And if I move both these in either, either local or object, they should move out from, you know, based on the direction of the curve that they're, they're part of. So I'm pulling them out from the head a little bit and scale them up just a little, little, no, that's not what I want. Um, no, I'm not going to scale them up. Uh, if I did, I'd have to do them one at a time. Um, but actually, that, that looks fine. But I am going to pull the arrows out a little bit farther in this case. So for each one. Okay, so I've got two controls that are lined up. They aren't driving the joint yet, so I need to do that part. Um, Easy enough. Grab the control, grab the joint, constrain, parent. Control, joint, constrain, parent. I mean, the G key to do the last command. So now these controls drive those joints, and I just rotate them to put them in place. So we do the same for the rest of the head here, and you know, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because there's so many of those, and this will just get boring to watch me do the same thing over and over. Um, it's the same process for all these. It's just lining them up, all that. Um, I've gone through and made a bunch of the other controls ahead of time. So you kind of see what I, I'm going for here. Let me go ahead and hide the joints so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, so I use that same arrow concept through there with building different points. Here's just a circle. Here I traced the lips and pulled it out farther. Uh, I, I bent the lips a little bit here. Um, so, you know, grab the CVs placed the CV here and uh, went into, uh, well, let me show you what I did. So you see how I got the angle with, while keeping everything straight so the arrow still aims down the, that curve. Um, you know, went, went into component mode, grabbed my, where's my rotate tool? Let's turn off select miscellaneous. Uh, I think my Rotate tool is still uh, got that thing turned on, so we're going to unlock it. That's from earlier when we did the neck. There we go. I can't remember which one's which. You know, like one's the circle's built in, one's it's not. Uh, when it's not, I'm not sure which is which. But so if I want to rotate it like this, I just you know snap the pivot point down to there, and then I can rotate that so it's always aiming at that point. Um, but after I build all this, n nothing fancy, just doing a parent constraint to all those controls after that. Um, and, and then all these CT groups follow the head. So you'll make a, maybe a master group for all of them, uh, parent them under that master group, and then have that master group follow the base joint of the head. And that way they're always moving with. So that's the face. You know, I'm skipping past all this other stuff, but, uh, same concept for all these. You know, it's, they're lined up the same way, and they parent and follow. Um, so when you look at the final version, you can see this all set up for yourself. Uh, 
but uh, for now, that's as far as I'm taking you. So we have a head control to move the head overall. We have eye control to aim the eyes, and then the individual pieces for the face to position and control it. Um, so hopefully uh, you're able to follow along with that. If not, uh, hopefully rewinding and watching again will get you through. And we'll move on to the next lessons where we start to finish up the last few things like the hands and you know combining all this into one movable rig. So uh, see you next time.